Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome to the next lesson in On One's Eight Days of Editing. In this lesson, let's take a sequence of still images from a winter landscape and transform them into smooth time-lapse video using On One's time-lapse engine. I'll see you in the editing room. Inside of Photo Raw, I've navigated to the time-lapse files here. There's 590 of them. Now, I'm looking at the raw files here. Uploading all of these raw files was about 25 gigs, so I just exported them into JPEGs. So they're not edited at all, they're just the raw exported into JPEGs. So if you wanna just follow along with those JPEGs, it's going to be the same steps and the end result will look very, very similar. So even though you're not working with raw files like I am, it's still going to be the same workflow. So. I've just navigated to those practice files. We got 590 of them here. It's gonna be about 20 seconds or so, 22 seconds of, of time lapse. So let's grab the first image. Typically what I do in these time lapse edits is I'll grab the first photo in the sequence, I'll modify it to my liking, and then I'll apply that look to the rest of the images in the sequence. And then we'll take those images, we'll put them into the time lapse engine, and it will produce a nice, smooth, fluid, Time lapse. So let's do it. I'm gonna grab the first image here. I'm gonna head over here to the edit module. And with this shot, to save some time in the editing room, I'm just going to use AI Auto. And that should help liven up the scene quite a bit. So that does a pretty good job of just bringing out the tones in the, the photograph. One thing that I want to do here is I want to make sure that we can tell the difference between our mountain here and our sky. So to do that, let's head down here to our color area and let's increase this saturation quite a bit. The sky area is going to have much more color in it because we do have the blues, we have the colors changing within these clouds. So increasing that saturation a bit is just going to make sure that we have some, some different colors coming across the sky. Now let's head up here to the effects tab and let's add a filter that modifies the detail in our mountain. Let's apply the dynamic contrast filter, a perfect filter for applying and incorporating detail. What I wanna do with this filter is I only want it applied to the mountain region. I don't want it applied to the sky. So let's open up the masking options for this dynamic contrast filter. We can see that it's all white, meaning it's revealing the entire filter onto the scene. Remember, in masking, white reveals and black conceals. So let's invert this mask so that it's concealing the dynamic contrast filter. Then let's head up here to our top tool modifier bar and let's modify our masking brush settings. For my masking brush, I want my mode set to paint in because I need to paint in this dynamic contrast filter so that we can see it on the mountain. I can then modify my size, and I typically use a larger brush size in cases like this where I'm painting onto a much larger subject. We'll keep the feathering, opacity, and flow at 100, and the angle doesn't matter because we're using a circular brush. And now we can just paint this dynamic contrast filter onto our mountain. And let me just go in here to the dynamic contrast filter, and let's choose Surreal so you guys can really see the detail that I'm painting into the scene. Just like that, and it's pretty intense, so let's head back up here to the top part of the filter and let's lower the opacity to fit our taste. And I think that looks pretty good around 50. Now let's copy this mask that we just created because we're going to use this mask on another filter. Let's add one last filter onto the scene and I'm going to use the glow filter. In the glow filter, I'm going to use this darker preset, a really awesome preset for blurring and adding a bit of haze to the photo. In the darker preset, let's just pull up on the amount quite a bit then to apply this to the sky and avoid the mountain, we're going to head up here to the masking options for our glow preset. And let's paste that mask 
and then invert it. So if we turn this glow filter off and on now, it's only applied to that sky area and it's not applied to our detailed mountain. So now let's hit the backslash key on our keyboards. And we have a nice basic edit that brings out the textures in the mountain and the softness and fluidity of these clouds in the sky. So now that we've created that look, let's go back into the browse module. Let's make sure this image is selected first. Then let's select all of the other images in our sequence. Let's head down here to sync. And in this apply settings dialog, let's make sure that we have our develop settings and our effects settings apply. Now the one thing that we need to ensure here is that apply masks is enabled so that it takes the masks that we created and it applies them to the rest of the images. Now let's head down here to apply. And once all of the images have those same settings applied to them, Head over here to the right side of your screen and select time. And in our time-lapse dialog, we can see we have 590 frames amounting to about 24 seconds. And if we pull our preview to the right, we have a really nice, cool, dramatic time-lapse of these clouds. So now onto the time-lapse options. Because I'm using raw, I'm going to go in here to my raw input and I'm going to actually use fast raw. And then in my size, I'm going to use 4K, codec H.264, quality high. And in our frames per second, I'm actually going to use 24 because that's how I calculated the amount of frames needed for the time lapse. And for speed, I'm going to leave it at one and then I'll enable detect camera movement and reduce flicker. So now let's head down here to create video. And once your time lapse is done rendering, you can navigate to it, open it up, and it should look something like this. Thanks so much for watching and learning about time lapse creation. I'll see you in the next lesson.